Sorry about the duplicate of this that might possibly be showing up on Google Plus because the first time I tried to, um, you know, configure this and it took me to the page to click start to actually, you know, load the thing up. It's like, oops, not found, error, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, ah, fuck. So it's like then there's this hangout listed there that, like, I have no way of starting. So it's like a duplicate, like, dead hangout. It's pretty fucked up. But anyway... The reason we switched to this is because um, not too long ago, me and Rich were talking on Skype about these topics, and we had a pretty good flow going, except for Skype being a little douchebag whore and constantly, you know, chopping out blocks of sound and so on and so forth. So we're just kind of like, all right, well, you know, fuck this. We'll just go to Google. And I'm thinking, all right, well, I may as well make it a hangout while I'm at it, you know. So um, I'm going to go into a screen share mode and um, this little article about guns and all that stuff is what we were talking about before the current thing that we're going to pick up on first. Um, one second here. Okay. Um, I am DB. Um, R-E-M-O. Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. 1985. It's another one, I guess, similar, you could say, to movies like John Carpenter's They Live, as far as there being a very real and, and prophetic message that is embedded within the otherwise completely fictional plot. An officially dead cop is trained to become an extraordinarily unique assassin in service of the U.S. president. Anyway, Rich was explaining to me, you know, basically what this movie entailed. Not like spoilers, but, you know, just the, the basics and what it has to do with, you know, real life and world events and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to let him, like, restart that from the beginning um, but without all of the sound cutting out and other Microsoft Skype generated bullshit, and I'll just uh, I'll mute myself and, and let him do that. Okay, yeah. Um, Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. It's a really good um, kind of semi fictional. Well, yeah, it is fictional, but I mean, there's real aspects within it. <clears throat> Remo Williams is basically, you know, as the description says, it's a dead ex-cop who basically gets uh, set up, a New York cop, who's basically just sitting in his police cruiser one night and about three thugs go running on by, you know. So, being a cop, he goes in to investigate and gets out of his cruiser and catches the thugs and then he finds out that the thugs were all on the same team. They were just trying to, for whatever reason, you know, assault an officer or whatever and so he kicks all their asses and beats them up and you know gets back in his squad car and you know takes a sip of his coffee and then the main head agent who works for a underground secret united states military government branch who's driving this up armored truck or whatever rams his cruiser and the cruiser goes flying into the hudson river and that's where supposedly the cop being Remo dies and two officers basically pull his body out of the car before he dies and they send him to a hospital they do plastic surgery on him and um, you know they give him a new name and a new identity and the old man that he was is no longer there and he's just a new government agent and basically he's put into service for the US government to protect the Constitution and fight against a evil military arms company called Grove Industries, which was developing multiple weapons for the U.S. military, um, you know, 
prototype rifles, uh, the HARP program, which was basically a predecessor to Star Wars. And Star Wars was a very real thing that did happen in the 80s. That was a proposed idea for um, satellites that carried onboard lasers to shoot down Russian intercon intercontinental ballistic missiles. I wouldn't even be surprised if we have stuff up there like that in secret that they never said anything about. But um, anyway, it's essentially basically Remo's hunting the head villain of Grove Industries, the head honcho. He's basically hunting him down and he, you know, he's going to assassinate him and, you know, basically protect the U.S. Constitution and, you know, fight against corruption and a evil military industrial complex who's more interested in profits than protecting, you know, the United States. That's essentially, that's essentially the, uh, the gist of the film without really throwing any spoilers in there. Um, and there's one line in the movie that really kind of goes along with the whole plot. Um, basically, the Remo is the 11th commandment, thou shalt not get away with it. That's essentially the idea, which I always laugh when I hear that because it's like, yep, you know. But anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a good film and it's very worth watching it's on netflix right now if you get the chance if you have netflix you can watch it um and if you don't have netflix you can do what dave just did you can download it and put it on your computer and watch it that way but uh yeah that's that's Remo williams that's the adventure begins and there's a lot more in the movie that's actually really good and funny it's kind of a shame that they never Never really picked up on it and never really went on to make sequels but um you know it's probably in my opinion one of the best movies out of the 80s i mean there's multiple great movies that came out of the 80s but that's definitely one of my favorites one of my personal favorites and dave you can continue with wherever else you want to go all right well assuming that you're able to see the screen. Um, why don't you, uh, you know, tell me about uh, everything you were saying about this <laughs> earlier, you know, so that um, everybody else uh, can uh, know what we were discussing, because obviously everybody else wasn't privy to our earlier private conversation. Okay, hold on just a second. Let me go to the paradigm shift. Educational Comedy Facebook page. Okay, scrolling down to what I posted just a couple of minutes ago. Once Facebook decides to load, since it's been really slow today, and I haven't been the only one going through this. That's why I put it on TSC. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, okay, here it is. Well, um, well, this is a local thing for me. But um, I'll just read off the, the, <clears throat> the news article first, how the news reported it. Uh, this afternoon in Salem, Governor Brown will have a signing ceremony for Senate Bill 941, the Oregon Firearms Safety Act. SB 941 requires people to complete most firearm transfers in front of a licensed gun dealer to request a criminal background check. Family members, law enforcement, inherited firearms, and certain temporary transfers are exempt from this law. Violations of the soon-to-be law can land people in prison for a maximum of 10 years and cost them a fine of up to $250,000. The Oregon Firearm Safety Act is an important step toward the effort to keep guns out of the hands of criminals and others whom the law has determined should not have them, said Governor Brown. The bill provides a common-sense approach to accomplishing that goal without interfering with the lawful right of citizens to bear arms. Do you agree with this governor's statement? Well, first of all, as I said above in my little caption, well, as if it weren't obvious, considering our state's bought out by corporate interests that really don't care about the people, they just want to fuck the people over any way they can. Um, essentially, this law will do nothing to cure criminal gun violence. Nothing really will except, you know, a good, knowledgeable, armed populace who can counter, you know, criminal activity. That's the only way criminals really get cured of anything is if, you know, people are armed and prepared to respond in kind. Um, 
And all this law essentially does is makes it harder for law abiding, meaning people like me and Dave Kelso, law abiding, you know, people who follow the law, people who don't want to get in trouble, people who don't break laws. It's going to make it harder for us to partake in our constitution, God given, you know, our constitutionally God given rights to, you know, bear a firearm. Now, yet again, not everybody wants to own a gun, which you don't have to. Nobody's saying you have to own a gun. That's kind of one, like I said last night, that's one of those choice amendments that you can partake in. Um, I don't, but, but I'm glad that Chicago has open carry now. I mean, I don't personally like guns, but I definitely feel more comfortable if Chicago would get to the point where, you know, seven out of every ten people around me was packing heat. Obviously, most criminals aren't suicidal. So, you know, they're not going to be like, oh, cool, seven out of ten people around me probably have guns. I'm going to, like, do something stupid and get my ass blown away right now. No. You know, most, most criminals don't do that. But what all criminals do is they don't fucking obey laws. That's what criminals really don't do. And even the Founding Fathers warned us about the idea of people getting comfortable with, oh, you know, well, words on a piece of paper. We'll call it legislation. It's magic. And it puts up these magical force fields that prevent criminals from doing criminal things. And mixing that back in with the whole, you know, movies theme that we're still also going to keep going on. Movie series Once Upon a Time. Very good paradigm shifting movie. Very relatable to world events and our times and so on and so forth. But not to give away any spoilers or anything. I'll keep this as vague as I can to prevent that. There's this character by the name of the author. And his job is to record historical events that happen throughout the different realms. Or, you know, in our terms, we might consider it the multiverse, but they call it realms. And he also, even though he's not supposed to, has the ability to take his magic pen with magic ink on magic paper and actually edit reality itself and, you know, change circumstances just literally with the stroke of a pen. But even he cannot do certain things. He can't change people's state of being. He can't make them think one way or another. He can't, you know, bring the dead back. There's like this whole big long list of things that he's just not able to do right alongside the long list of things he can do. And that's exactly like legislation. No matter how much magic or <laughs> military industrial weaponry force you have backing you, as far as, you know, being able to try to force your your will on others through violence, be it, you know, passive or aggressive. Obviously, the author character writing with his pen, that would be passive violence. And a, you know, freaking drone coming in and blowing away a neighborhood would be, you know, the more aggressive violence. But, you know, either, either which way, you know, all, uh, all legislation, all that stuff on, on paper does is it's just those who assume they have power just saying, okay, all you people are going to obey. And then all the people just complicitly comply without questioning anything. Well, meanwhile, the criminals are still going to be criminals no matter what. It doesn't matter how hard you might try to make it to get a gun or trade guns or, or whatever it is. Criminals are always going to find the back door around it and continue to be criminals no matter what. And just to show you who runs things uh, in this country, this country's court system is referred to as the criminal justice system. That is admitting that it's justice for criminals. The criminals run the criminal justice system. It is justice for criminals, by criminals, and the rest of us get the shaft. So people think the system is broken. No, it's not. It's working perfectly. People should ask what the system was actually designed to do rather than believing the lie that they were told about it. Yeah, precisely. And, um, you know, as I was just about to say before you went on your little spiel, you know, criminals are criminals for a reason. They do not follow laws, period. They broke the law to begin with. They're criminals. They violate laws 
menopause. That's what they do for a living. That's what they like to do. That's their fetish. That's what they're into. They like to violate the law. And, you know, I don't believe that our representatives are so stupid that they don't know that. They know that. They're criminals themselves. They know. You know, and I was reading comments on this KTVL CBS News 10 Medford article, you know, with the Glock 19 Gen 4 9 by 19 Parabellum handgun that is displayed in the picture caption, but, um, you know, people are, let's see, people are saying, you know, like this guy named uh, Rowdy Christian Male, it's kind of a funny name if you ask me, but anyway, he's like, we the people voted the state legislators who passed this bill. You don't like it? Vote for a different representative. He fails to realize that both the representatives are both just puppets going towards a common goal, which is just absolute and utter theocratic tyranny. They're just basically two sides to an oligarchy. It's, you know, two different giant corporate funded infested factions going at a, you know, little kid baby brawl fight at one another. Um, but anyway, two tests. Two, tes two, tes two testicles, one genital area. That's the political system. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> basically, he's like, American citizens don't have the right to vote on every single law, which that's not really what's being argued here. There are other proponents saying that people should have voted for this law. We as the people have a right to vote for laws that affect our way of life. That's not just some tiny ass little pizzly ant law, you know. Our representatives are there to represent common issues, everyday issues, not issues such as this that are literally, you know, affecting the lives of many. You know, now if the majority of the people say they want such a law or whatever for whatever reason, then the representatives craft a bill, you know within accordance to the people's wishes and pass such a law. Okay, that's going with the democratic system. But the thing is, and it's been proven on record, you know, you can look it up on Breitbart, you can look it up on Drudge Report, you can look it up on InfoWars, you can look it up on Russia Today, you can look it up anywhere, that, you know, there were Bloomberg interests within, you know, the last year and a half that have been pushing for anti-gun sediments in the state of Oregon. The state of Oregon's been coming under full assault by this. You know, I'm kind of unfortunately right now a, you know, recipient of this tyranny, of the barrel rolling that's come through the state, you know, saying, oh, fuck you, you're not allowed to own a gun because of da 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 da. You know, it's, it's just ridiculous. You know, we the people have the right to vote on serious issues. This is a serious issue. The reason why we didn't get to vote on it and frankly didn't, and a majority of us, frankly, haven't really heard about it is because the powers that be know if we were given the choice, we would say no to such a bill, and they just can't have that, you know, because they think they're God, they think they own us, they think we're just their little serfs that can be kicked around and told what to do, you know, and we're not, we never were, we're, you know, we're free citizens in this country, or at least we should be, we're just under a corporate rule tyranny. You know, we're occupied. We've been occupied for the last 135 years, at least, you know, by a bunch of crooks, you know. And, but anyway, he continues on, you know, we elect representatives to do it for us. The USA is a representative democracy, not even really understanding what that term means. And then he's basically saying, you don't seem to know what that means or how it works. And it's just, you know, it's baseless. It's pointless. You know, there's no... You know, it's just his words versus an overwhelming stack of evidence. I mean, you know, I could just go on and on and on, you know. But um, anyway, um, you know, it's just it's just another example of, you know, the abuses and the usurpations that have occurred, you know, like the long list that, is in the Declaration of Independence. Hell, you could even craft a new Declaration of Independence. You could take the original blueprint document. You could literally take out some of the words, replace them with modern words and phrasings. You'd have a completely new document, but it would still be the same exact message. That's how bad it is. 
you could write a whole list of all of the things that this government has done, totally violating our sacred customs and our way of life. You could write a brand new, you, you could essentially craft a new document using the original Declaration of Independence as a template. Not changing the whole thing, but just changing out keywords and, you know, just changing the list around, removing, you know, the king and saying our elected representatives, I mean, things like that. You know, we live, we are living in a new tyranny, you know, where if, you know, you say the wrong thing or, you know, you get caught at a bad place at a bad time, you know, your rights get stripped from you, you get, you know, whether it be a restraining order, you get a felony, you get, you know, whatever, whatever gets slapped on you. And there are plenty of people out there uh, that have had felonies wrongfully slapped on them just for an offense that is not even an offense. It's just laughably stupid. But yet we've got people in this government who are so out of their mind and sane that they act like it is some sort of drastic offense to do something stupid, you know. We li we just we just live in an upside down country. We live in, we no longer live in a republic. We haven't lived in a republic for a long time. We're just a bunch of you know we're a bunch of citizens under the control of a bunch of tyrant, psychopathic, deranged inbreds, if you will. And this is just another example of how they're slowly going state by state, trying to restrict the rights of citizens. Now I will say there is contrast, you know. Um, I can't remember the state offhand, but there's an East Coast, there's a state on the East Coast that's actually going to make it legal for all citizens to open carry. As Dave told me, they have apparently made it legal to open carry in Chicago, which is huge. I mean, I would have never expected Chicago within my lifetime to ever be so bold as to do that. Um, they're rearranging laws in Texas now. Well, Texas has always traditionally been open carry, but they're actually going to kind of pass laws and legislation that will make it very hard for the feds or any bot candidates to do anything in the future to try to restrict open carry or firearms rights. But, you know, we're just living in real rough times, as I said yesterday, and I've said before, we're in choppy seas and, you know, there's high and low points and it's just a matter of navigating through it. It's just, you know, but yet again, this is just another law. It's just a, it's a pointless, useless, baseless law that has literally no meaning. It's not going to do anything to curb anything. It's not going to touch criminals. It's not going to touch, it's not going to, if, if, if a violent criminal is going to be violent, he's just going to be violent, period. There's no law, there's no decree, there's no act that's going to stop him from being what he is, which is a criminal. You know, if he's a triple conniving axe murderer who likes to go chop people in half and eat them, he's going to chop people in half and eat them, whether it's a military grade uh, tomahawk or it's just a standard, you know, wood chopping axe or whatever the hell it is. If it's a freaking rusty nail and a piece of sharp glass, it doesn't matter. You know, he's going to, he's going to do what he's going to do. He's a criminal, you know, violent offenders are going to be violent. If they've got mental problems, they're going to find a way to be, what they are, which is frothing at the mouth animal, you know, and, you know, as if we lived in kind of a similar system to the old West, you know, you just take those people, you hang them high at noon, you just let them sit there until their neck snaps or they stop breathing and you just bury them out in the back 30 and put them under about five feet of topsoil and you don't have to worry about them again because he's not around to talk about it, you know. We used to handle things with a common sense manner. If somebody just couldn't couldn't handle themselves and they just couldn't keep their cool and they were they just had this niche to be trouble. How do you take care of trouble? You just get rid of it. Throw it out like the used newspaper. You know. Is it is it a crude and rudimentary system? Hell yes, it's crude, but you know, it gets the point across and it keeps a problem from manifesting into something that just keeps racking up a toll of victims and whatever else, but... Well, yeah. and the, the prob the main, one of the main problems in the society that we have today is that, um, first of all, our system is all about um, punishing the offender instead of, you know, restoring the victim. Um, you know, 
take these, you know, these criminals and instead of locking them, you know, away in a jail or something, you know, make them, make them, you know, work or do labor, or whatever. And then the money they make from that then, you know, is ruled by the judge to go to the restoration of the victim. You know, maybe the, <clears throat> the criminal, you know, broke their legs or, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, the person's got like, you know, a hundred thousand dollars in medical bills and whatever, you know, it, you know, it's all, all well and fricking great in a, in a fleeting little fist throwing egotistical temper tantrum to say, yeah, well he did me wrong and now he got his, he's in jail. But beyond that moment, well, what, what the fuck does it actually do for the person that got wronged? Nothing. And, you know, we're not, our society is not about preventing problems or correcting problems. It's about pointing fingers and shaking fists. I mean, you know, we don't want to look at the fact that our educational system and society as a whole is so fucked up and caught in this, you know, these cycles and, and these memes that, you know, a lot could be a lot better if we would just start, you know, straightening out our educational system so that it's, it's about intuition, critical thinking, discernment, and, you know, actually figuring out what, what people are good at, their skills, and allowing them to move in those directions. And, you know, when you're really good at something and, and you, you love what you're doing, then, you know, it's not even work anymore everybody's got something they're good at, at least one thing, whether they know it or not, that they can contribute to society. And if we lived in a society like that, there'd be a lot less criminal behavior because we wouldn't have all these, you know, these, these ghettos and gang wars and, you know, broken families and, you know, all this and that where everybody's so stressed under this, you know, freaking tyrannical system that all they want to do is, you know, after working, you know, eight to 12 hours in a day, come home and veg out on the on the TV for a few hours before then going to bed and doing it all again and then God help them if they have a family on top of it you know the, the marriage ends up disintegrating and the relationships between the parents and the kids ends up going to shit and you know it's just like just this repeating cycle and you know if if we would just kind of put an end to these cycles, there wouldn't be nearly as many criminals because most quote unquote criminals aren't even really criminals. They're just people who had a bad break in life and people only know how to operate based on that, which they know. I mean, you don't know what you don't know and you know what you know. So if all someone knows is purely based in survival, you know, kill or be killed, you know, steal or go starving, that doesn't make them a criminal. That just means that, They've only been taught one thing. So the solution here is educating them because even someone in that situation is, is not going to be ungrateful if someone were to come up and be like, Hey, you know, I see you're, you're on hard times and you know, you've probably done a, a, a bunch of, you know, not so. Well, another, th another, th but, uh, Another thing I want to I want to mention though is they have been doing programs like that where they've been educating you know multi in and out of you know maximum security prison jails they've been giving these people high school degrees and all that that doesn't solve the problem. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm not I'm not ta I'm I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about paradigms, not book knowledge. Well, book well, knowledge is like legislation. It does nothing. <laughs> Well, I'm just talking about, you know, school and all that. I know. Stuff. I'm, well, I'm, saying, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, well, I, 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 I agree with you. On. That wouldn't solve anything. And that's great because that's totally not what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, you just kind of, the way you're phrasing it, it sounds like you're talking about no, that. No, I'm, to, I'm totally not. I'm, I'm okay. 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 As long as you cleared yourself up, that's yeah. okay. I'm just, I'm just saying. I just want to make that point. I'm just saying what's going to solve the problem is when we hold, you know, the globalists accountable who have been funding the war on drugs, who, have been, who that has in turn been funding the gangs and the corruption and the street violence. That's where it all roots from.
and that and then, and then they fund and then they fund the other side, the United States government, which is just a giant freaking overbloated corporation that is matter. trying to getting rid yeah. of somebody and taking the globalist to task is not going to erase the mental malware in your own head, Larkin Rose. I know it's not going to. I'm just saying where the problem lies. Where the first problem lies is, you know, you got it. You got to destroy the the of the command you got to cut that chain of command and get people freed up so they do have they because as things stand now you know you become part of some gang somewhere you know if you don't beat to the gang's tune they're just going to kill you you know well where and, and, go, and going through the paradigm shifting process you know even if you do, that's not going to prevent you from being killed out of the gang. You know, there's plenty of people who have had awakening experiences and the are actual, in government custody under protection the from the gang. And if they don't, huh? No, our inner William Black doesn't want to admit it. Our ego doesn't want to admit it. Where the first problem lies is the mental fucking malware. If we are I'm not a population, arguing. yeah, that is not mature enough mentally emotionally to even figure out how to rein the globalists in then reigning the globalists in is not the first task the first problem the first anything just like going to the store is not the first order of business if you don't know how to walk much less bike or drive or anything else so the first task is to to take responsibility for ourselves that thing that the ego our inner william fucking crouch cock doesn't want to do and say wow you know we've kind of been complacent this extreme barely visible microscopic minority of these rich thugs wouldn't be able to do what they've been able to do if we the masses the seven billion or however many people are on the planet weren't allowing it through our paradigms because it's all we've been taught. It's all we've been taught how to do. We gotta learn how to how to think in other ways and expand. Because we become such a narrow-minded society. History talks about Rome becoming narrow-minded and decadent and collapsing shit. We got Rome fucking beat, and we got it on a worldwide scale. So you know. Okay, true, true. Striking point. I see what you're saying. I'm just saying though. <clears throat> you know, you got to you got to cripple the you got to cripple the infrastructure, and yeah, the first way to do that is to clear the mental malware. That yeah, duh. <laughs> but um, I'm just saying overall. Just, uh, you interrupted me before, and we're trying to pull a William fucking Black, so that's that's why I kind of interjected there. You you've been in that a little bit of that mood today, I've noticed. So. You know, just kind of interjecting. And what I was saying earlier, as far as, you know, correcting problems at their source, it's a grassroots thing. If you, you know, take someone who's maybe done some shady shit to survive, not because they're a bad person, but because they're in an environment of kill or be killed, steal or go starving. I mean, I think any of us in that situation, what would you choose? You know, um, survive or die? So I think we'd all choose survive. That's, you know, that's that's a pretty inherent human thing. Um, so, yeah, a lot of these people, if you were to just, you know, kind, kind of take them and, and, you know, just be like, hey, you know, I understand what you're going through. You know, you've probably done a bunch of nasty shit. I don't care. It was just for survival, you know, but now you have the option to, you know, to learn some new ways out, outside of, you know, what you've been taught. And the key is empathy and relation. Because, you know, it's just like, you know, when, when you know, me, me and you and many other people, you know, have dealt with females that are, that are used to being, you know, treated badly by society and men and whatever. A nice guy comes up. They, not only do they not know what the fuck to do with that, but they don't believe it's real because that's, that's not within their, you know, their, their knowledge base. It's not what their life has been. It's the equivalent of coming up and, and asking them to believe in, you know, the tooth fairy. It sounds patronizing. Only when the guy can show that they can relate and empathize with the female, which requires a lot of patience and requires a lot of, you know, 
allowing the uh, the girl to have her tantrums and lashing out and whatever and then you show her that hey you know it's uh, i understand what you're going through and you empathize instead of criminalize eventually by being the change by being that observable example her neural networks start getting reprogrammed a little bit and she starts to see oh okay not all guys are scum and especially if you're talking to her about you know critical thinking and discernment and encouraging her not to believe or disbelieve you but to just question things and and to use the brain that god gave her you know there you go well it's the same type of thing with criminals if you you know and i'm not talking about the nasty evil ones quote unquote i'm talking about the ones that are just trying to survive that wouldn't be criminals otherwise if you go up to them and say hey well you know I, whatever you've done in the past it's cool clean slate you know we're going to teach you some easy ways to you know be a better person and you know survive better without living the way you've been living they're going to interpret that as if you're you're walking up like hey guess what I'm, i've got an opportunity for you to believe in the tooth fairy they're not going to believe it because that's the wrong approach the right approach is to empathize with them first you know or respect that you know they've had to do what they've had to do respect that they're going to be in disbelief you know respect that at first they're going to think you're full of shit. they're going to think you're just another fucking charity worker that's trying to convert them to some other mindset or whatever and use them and at first they're going to be like you know nah dude fuck you you know so you got to kind of keep the empathy going and the compassion going and, and show them and by compassion i don't mean huggy kissy valentine's day uh, compassion is just that that idea that you know you you can put yourself in someone else's shoes that you know you understand that if you were in their place you might have ended up much the same way so when you could start on that grassroots level and then those people start to take a chill pill then they're a bit more open to what you have to say and about your ideas but if you're coming up basically with with a, a polite version of look bitch i'm right you're wrong and you got to do what i say now because you got to stop being fucking criminal and they're going to look at you like the nazi that you are and be like fuck you and your nazism so you know if we got more compassion more empathy more cooler heads and working to deprogram the the malware and garbage and you know get people to think critically and use discernment and intuition and creativity and, and just restructure everything they think about reality but you know on their own terms with that that critical thinking not that okay here's your new reality i'm gonna hand it to you and you obey me or you're gonna be punished not that but a, a real you know expansion a real learning process not what the educational system has done not the fucking my way or the highway reality is what we say it is and if you dare question it then fuck you you know then we'll start to get somewhere and i think we've been starting to do that on the internet you know with with discussions like this i'm sure there's plenty of people who use the internet that are in not so great situations that are in survival modes and maybe they've had to steal and maybe even kill to survive that are, are on online watching videos like this because you know they got their obama phone or whatever and they're watching this and and you know maybe they're thinking you know these guys might have a point you know maybe maybe i should i should look into more of this critical thinking stuff you know maybe our complacency has allowed a small group of fucking scumbags to completely dupe us and you know maybe it's about time we take back our own power so then we can eliminate the problems in a calm rational way and not in a way to where we just destroy civilization again and come up out of the ashes to again just do the same old shit, same old mistake, same old thing ad nauseum. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I see. I see your point. I, you know, yeah. I mean, really, when I think about it, you know, I just prime example being myself. You know, here and when when you live a normal life and you just kind of grow up, you know, in a standard kind of nonchalant way you know nothing too drastic or you know you haven't really had to make hard choices but when you grow up with a life of nothing but hard choices and you make hard decisions that you know are literally life and death decisions you know that can kind of fuck you up you know and you know you just kind of are what you eat and if your environment's just nothing but shit you know and that's all it is you know well what do you expect the person to turn into now there are those rare cases that you know 
have enough mental maturation to realize, hey, this isn't the only route. Fuck this, I'm out. You know, and they run away from it, you know, and build their lives. I've seen people and examples of that, you know, people who look for, you know, who just have this innate sense of there's something better out there. This doesn't have to be the only way. But for those who are complacent, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, um, the real beginning process is realizing that where it all starts is with inside each and every one of us. And most average criminals, most average street thieves or, you know, gangsters or whatever, you know, they're just normal people like everybody else that, you know, have had, who have been dealing with a multi-generational manufactured and globalistly created underclass, you know, that kind of comes out of the last 40 years of degradation, if you will. It's just kind of that low income housing, free handout type stuff, you know, and they don't really know how else to survive, but to, you know, do what they do, which is, you know, either steal or, you know, kill someone or do whatever the hell it is that they have to do to, you know, make sure that they live to see the next sunrise the next morning, you know, and when you don't live that lifestyle and you don't really know anything about that lifestyle and this kind of ties into literature you know if you've ever read the book you know uh to kill a mockingbird you know by uh, harper lee you know you don't know a man unless you walk a mile in his shoes well that does apply to reality that applies to life you know if you haven't been in somebody else's shoes where you've had to make hard choices and hard decisions and you don't know what somebody else has felt, you know, whether they felt horrible on the inside, they felt violated, they felt, you know, whatever, you know, because they had to make a hard choice, but they had no choice to begin with because if they didn't make that choice, they were pretty much dead, you know, the gang lords that take care of them, take out the garbage, if you will, you know. Yeah, I mean, in the criminal in the criminal world it's kind of a dog eat dog world you know if you don't do what the mob bosses say you're pretty much sol you're dead you're out of luck you know there's just nothing else you know it's kind of like the orion syndicate in star trek you know it's the same type of stuff you know it's that you know uh dog eat dog type world you know once you get initiated into the syndicate you know that's pretty much a blood a blood brother relationship much like gangs in LA or wherever else around the planet, you know, it's that kind of commitment. And if you so much as sneeze or betray the syndicate, they take care of you like yesterday's newspaper. And they make sure to make an example of you of this is what happens when you're not completely loyal when I'm questioning. But, um, you know, yet again, all of those organizations, all of those things, they do come out of, you know, they're just manifestations, different manifestations of the same problem that society is going through. We are the gang members of the U.S. corporation, the U.S. mob, the U.S. gang, the global, you know, the globalist controlled faction that, you know, enslaves us with illusions of a vote and illusions of a, of a, you know, representative democracy, which it isn't anymore. It's a hijacked, took it over, you know, pile of crap, you know, and really, in a sense, those people are just within a faction, within a faction, you know, they've got their citizenship under the Crips or the Bloods or the West LA or whoever, you know, whoever the gang is, you know, that they're affiliated with, that's kind of their citizenship, their family, you know, and they're slaves to that, and they're slaves to that because of their complacency, because they're not willing to look for something better because they've been taught that, you know, life is pretty much the same old meme, misery, suffering, nothing good, you know, just the same old human nature, you know, dog eat dog, you know, if we don't do it this way, you know, we're dead, blah, 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 you know, the same old survival story. And yeah, you know, I hadn't really thought of that until, you know, Dave brought up that striking point, but no, that is true. You know, the first way to get to the store is to you know, learn how to stand up on your own two feet and take a few steps and, you know, learn how to walk before you can even think about learning how to operate a clutch and, you know, turn over an ignition switch to start a car and drive down to the store, you know. So, yeah, I mean, if and if such examples like that, if people started 
having their own kind of awakenings and realizing, hey, you know, there is something better. You know, the gangs would collapse themselves overnight just because people would awaken to their own potential and realize, hey, we don't have to live like this. We don't have to live in human trafficking and deplorable conditions where we're selling drugs and prostitutes and illegally obtain firearms and ammunition and whatever else they sell, you know, wherever they sell it, you know. Um, we don't have to live this way because there's a better way and, you know, we have the capability to do things in a better manner than, you know, what we've always been taught that we have to do things. And society's kind of slowly starting to go through that transition right now, but it's going to take time and it's going to be a painful process and there's going to be a lot of death and there's going to be a lot of blood and there's going to be a lot of misery slash happiness and everything else along the way. I mean, you know, there's going to be contrast and, you know, it's just going to be a mix of emotions and experiences and feelings and ups and downs and lefts and rights and any other direction you can contemplate or imagine. It's just, you know, the only way to climb out of a hole is to realize you're stuck at the bottom of one and, you know, you got to figure out where the first ledge is to grab onto to start climbing out. You can't just, you know, magically levitate out of the 40 foot hole in the ground. You got to kind of, you know, realize you're there and not be complacent that you're there. You got to realize, hey, there's a beautiful piece of land that is up above. I need to get back up to the surface level. And the only way to do that is to take initiative and realize that you're stuck there and you need to, it's up to you as the individual to get yourself out of it. You know, nobody else is going to be throwing handouts to you to get you out of it. You got to be willing to take that initiative and grab the bull by the horns if it were. Anyway, yep. Yep, yep. Have you ever seen the movie They Live? No. Oh, that is a that is a real good movie. That is um one of the um, just one of the, the big examples that that you know describes kind of what's been done to us and it was made in the 80s and the plot line was set in you know like today's times right now but it was um made in the 80s and um just uh, incredibly revealing um it's easy enough to find online but i'm just going to Okay, come on, little web interface here, Google. Um, try not. Here we go. Okay, cool. Screen share. All right. They live. A drifter discovers a pair of sunglasses that allow him to wake up to the fact that aliens have taken over the Earth. Now, of course, that plot line is completely fictional, but the way they represent it and the way they do it, I'm going to see if Google can it can help me find some frames. Let's the point. Okay. When he puts on the glasses and he looks at all the advertisements and all the signs around him, this is what he sees. Work eight hours, sleep eight, eight hours, um, obey, consume, watch TV, buy, buy, submit, sleep, marry and reproduce, um, some others. Here's um, a bookstore, do not question authority, stay asleep, um, all these different... Um, Doubt humanity, no thought, no thought, consume, um, submit, no thought, obey and conform, sleep. And of course, you, you see what the aliens actually look like in the same hypnotic trance that, you know, keeps them from, from seeing what all the, you know, advertising they're being bombarded with does to them 
that same, you know, technology of illusion is also used to make, you know, these human-like, but still obviously not human, you know, creatures appear, you know, as if they're human. So you see it here with police, there's a cop, you know, you see it here with politicians, you know, there's someone up there, yeah, vote for me, obey, I'm your, I'm your overlord, yeah, you know. So, yeah, the glasses and the faces, and it was made in the, in the 80s, but it's extremely, you know, prophetic to our times now, and it's talking about our times now, and, you know, I'm not going to get into the discussion of, of whether or not E.T. may or may not be involved in what, but it's definitely true that the educational system has our minds so narrowed and that narrowing has been done based on a lot of research by the quote unquote elites into psychology. I mean, you've got the nephew of Sigmund Freud, Edward Bernays, who, you know, was an elite. And um, he said to his fellow elites, he's like, it's, it's our responsibility to control what the masses think and feel and like and do because according to the the belief system of the elites if they don't do that then the world's gonna be destroyed and everything will come crumbling down and everything will go extinct and it'll be a disaster so they're incredibly afraid and insecure and they psychologically project that and they get really control freaky thinking that they have to control everything and everyone on the external in order to have control over their own lives and that if they don't be responsible for the greater good of humanity and enslave the population and make them dumb and obedient in order that they don't rise up and destroy the planet in their animalistic stupidity those those bottom feeders those useless eaters then then you know it's if we don't take responsibility and do the mature right thing and and keep these crazy animals tranquilized, then the world's just gonna go to hell in a handbasket. So this is this is really what these people believe. So, you know, that's that's what a lot of people when they research into this stuff they they don't understand. You know, it's not about a a, a bunch of guys in cloaks, you know, sitting around a table acting like the fucking Joker on Batman. We very much have have a very narrow, you know, television, I'll get you next time, gadget, you know, sort of view of the world as if good and bad is so black and white that we don't realize that this is just a group of people that are caught in some very insecure, nasty paradigms. And they, they just so happen to have, you know, a lot of money and resources that their families attained over generations to be able to do a lot more damage than, you know, the average, like, you know, say, ghetto person could do. I mean, you know, what what can a an insecure, you know, psychologically and emotionally sick, whacked out, you know, criminal control freak mindset do with limit limitless money and resources, you know, versus somebody with the same mental and emotional sickness but you know they're in the ghetto. They don't have any money. You know they're they're just they're living day to day. They're they're stealing just to be able to eat. You know, obviously there's going to be a difference in capability between these two groups of people. So people people like to you know take the idea of the elites and demonize them and act like it's Darth Vader come rolling in with a Death Star and whatever. But it's really just a bunch of insecure fuckers that have gained power because of the rest of us insecure fuckers have let them because we believe that we need babysitters. We've actually bought into the same belief that they have, that without overlords, society will destroy itself. So we've got the same belief system as they do, just from the other side of the coin. Yeah, that's a, that's a uh, pretty true and profound story you know, explanation, <clears throat> you know, you know, society is bought into the idea that, you know, 
if there's nobody keeping a control on all the cogs and gears at once, that everything is just going to come crumbling down and there's not going to be anything left to, to rebuild on. But what people forget is that society itself is built on individual input, on individual inspiration, on individual ideas, on individual intellect. It's built on individuals. It's not built on a bunch of people in a room and a bunch of black suits and ties. It's built with, by people in blue jeans. And, you know, that's what society is made on. It's not made on, you know, a bunch of banksters on Wall Street. It's not made on a bunch of people in some palace in Europe. It's made on people like you and me. That's what society was built out of. That's what society will, or civilization as it will eventually become is built on. It's built on individual initiative, input, inspiration. It's not built on anything that <clears throat> any elitist does or, you know, puts into the planet. The elitist just basically kind of like leeches suck off of, you know, the class, uh, off of the middle and lower class. That's all they do. They kind of just take a free ride, if you will, on the hard work and creativity of average individuals but yeah i pretty much agree with what you said and that's all i really have to say Alrighty then um i guess it at this point um the only question now is um hmm, any any other like really good movies you know, or TV series or, or whatever that you could think of that are not only entertaining, but, you know, they help to kind of deprogram people and, and, you know, help them paradigm shift. And, you know, there's a lot of valid stuff that, um, you know, is within the otherwise completely fictional, you know, plot lines. Oh, I'd say like Star Trek, um, Star Wars for sure. Um, Indiana Jones is another good one, you know, there's just a lot of, there's really a lot of good films out there. Um, those are really the big three off, offhand that I, you know, <clears throat> really think have a lot of messages in them that are good. Star Wars and Star Trek more than Indiana Jones, but Indiana Jones is pretty entertaining. But not any offhand, either than those. Well, I can definitely say that, like, for example, the TV series Fringe, um, even though the plot lines are obviously, you know, completely um, fictional, they do go into a lot of quantum physics, a lot of metaphysics, you know, a lot of the other sciences, and, you know, they they go into paradigms and you know they go into ideas about freedom and tyranny and you know they go into a lot about you know corporations and just you know they, they uh, you've got the whole fucking gamut oh you just reminded me of one uh, it, it was aired a couple of years ago unfortunately it never really picked up because I think it was too much of a whistleblowing operation um, it was on ABC it was called uh, Last Resort. It was about a nuclear missile submarine um, that was out in the Pacific that was basically given orders to nuke Pakistan to further the interests of the military industrial complex. They refused and basically they became an enemy of the United States and for, you know, like three or four weeks they went, ag went against the U.S. It's, it's a one series show but it's a really good show they had to cut it short because it was it was pulling too many whistles at once and the powers that be didn't really like it and <clears throat> it's not on netflix unfortunately but um i believe you can probably find streams of it online yeah um Another good one. 
been a bunch of good ones. Um, you know, even um, even the movie Frozen, and you know, a lot of the uh, the Disney stuff is starting to go into kind of you know a lot of the the deprogramming paradigms and pointing out you know a lot of the societal dysfunctions and how to actually you know work through them and you know kind of make make uh, lemonade out of lemons so to speak and um oh, let's see there there's just a, a bunch of really good ones i kind of what about once upon a time? I already mentioned that earlier. Oh, okay. I didn't hear you. Yeah. Um, it's a Wonderful Life, 1946, an oldie but but a goodie. It you know kind of um, you know gives you you know a, a fresh perspective as far as um, you know how we tend to take life for granted and and you know. We're like the stone being dropped into the pond, and we don't always see our ripples. So, you know, we don't think we're making any. And, you know, this this kind of it kind of shows just the impact of the individual. Um, you know, of course, um, if you've been alive on on Earth for a bit, and it just kind of stalks you every freaking Christmas, and time goes by of course it's one of those things that you're eventually going to get really sick of watching <laughs> but if you've never seen it before or you haven't seen it in uh, forever and you know you never really thought about it in this way and it was just a cute movie to watch at christmas or whatever um then that would that's a good watch um 1977 an animated movie called wizards um it basically takes place something like, I don't know, like a million years after our time or, or something like that. Um, a, a million, uh, something like um, there was a, a nuclear war that destroyed everything. And humans as we know them to be, kind of like through, you know, just the radiation and, and the energy and everything, um, those who couldn't handle that level of energy, so they were paradigm clearing too fast and ended up, ended up getting diseased and dying. Um, you know, those who couldn't handle it didn't, and most people died, but the ones who could, like, they kind of evolved into, like, these, you know, like, you know, pixies and fairies and dwarves and other mythical, um, sorts of creatures and you know among them there became what you might call the old atlantean argument um you know science versus magic because within this transformation you know part of the civilization just tapped into the power of consciousness and that which you know we in the quote-unquote mainstream refer to as you know magic quote-unquote if you want to put a disney spin on it but it's really just that, you know, tapping into those levels of quantum physics, you know, using consciousness. And then, you know, the quote unquote, um, what's referred to as the, the science being the, you know, the, the old, um, you know, classical mechanics, you know, bowling balls and, uh, and, and pins sort of way of doing things. So, you know, that kind of argument resurfaces and basically they're just kind of you know ends up being your kind of you know everybody shifting through their paradigms and you know epic battles and all that sort of stuff and also because of the raised level of consciousness um lifespans were a lot longer um from what they said in the movie typical lifespans about ten thousand years and um Another good movie is 1982, The Dark Crystal. Um, that one's, it's a really hard one to explain. It's an old, you know, Jim Henson flick from, from uh, God, was it? Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was Henson. 
it's definitely Henson, same people who made, you know, Kermit the Frog and all that. Um, but anyway, it was just, it was just really about, you know, the fine line between good and evil and about integration and very esoteric. Um, let's see. Drop Dead Fred, 1991. That's a good one. It, it kind of, it, it's basically about a girl has this imaginary friend who's not quite so imaginary. Um, you know, again, another one of those, um, magical sort of things, but based on paradigms. And, um, you end up seeing this little girl as, as an adult and the imaginary friend kind of ends up coming back to haunt her and is interfering totally in, in her adult life. And, um, you know, basically the, uh, the whole point of the story is that when we, when we forget about certain things from childhood and really lose our sense of value of things and our creativity and we get caught up in the rat race that, you know, we just kind of become dead inside and, and hollow and, and life just becomes something we're surviving instead of something that we're living. And, you know, here comes this, this crazy character back into this chick's life to, to remind her that there's, you know, more to life than, you know, corporate boardrooms. Um, another good paradigm shifter, 1991, a movie called Switch. There's this guy who is just, you know, kind of a wealthy corporate, you know, executive guy. And he treated, he treated women really shitty. And he, he ended up getting murdered. <laughs> and, um, you know, basically, long story short, he, need, he needed to go back to Earth and find one woman who ever liked him. And... Um, you know, that was a task that quote unquote God sent him back to do. So then Satan pops up and says, Hey, this isn't fair. He's just gonna schmooze a girl, you know, make her like him and and then you know it's then that's all done. That's that's not very fair at all. And God, who spoke in masculine and feminine at the same time, you hear a male and female voice in unison speaking the same word at the same time, was asking, What do you suggest? And the devil's like, well, that's easy. Make him a woman. So he, if so, it's like, you know, it's real funny. You know, he, he wakes up and he gets up and he tries to, to go to the John and notices that, you know, there's no penis there anymore. And then looks in the mirror and screams. And, <laughs> you know, it's, and it's just a, a really funny, you know, just paradigm shifting movie. And just really, you know, lets you kind of look at things from... Kind of a male and female point of view at the same time so it's it's not like that you know like bitchy feminists to like oh well females are victims and males are the aggressors then yeah I'm not talking about that just more like bridging the gap between male and female understandings and just you know kind of realizing that we're all human so that's that was another really good one and there's Bedazzled that was made in 2000. That one's freaking hilarious. And again, it's all about, you know, the whole fine line between, you know, good and evil and, you know, just all those sorts of paradigms and integration and all that. But basically with this, um, the devil's a woman. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's this really nice but and well-intended but, you know, shy and dorky guy that, really doesn't know how to conduct himself and he's just a failure when it comes to communicating with his fellow human beings total fail and real low self-esteem and everything and just the laughing stock of everything and you know this she devil kind of kind of walks in and just like hey you know i i'll give you these you know seven wishes i think it was seven and um you know you can make your life whatever you want but you know after that you have to give me your soul and, of course, you know, every wish is like a setup. Like, she does everything possible to totally, like, you know, like, sabotage everything. Like, with one, you know, he was, like, saying, I want to be the most, the, the most um, emotionally sensitive man in the world so that, you know, the girls will like me. And she ends up making him so, so overly emotionally sensitive 
that like he became nothing more than an annoyance and the girls hated him and so on and like this uh, he just kept getting put through the fucking ringer and it was hilarious another good one is little nicky um where you know the, the the son of the devil has to come to earth in order to stop his evil brothers from turning earth into hell and that's the one with the scene where you know hitler gets it in the ass with the pineapple so that was definitely a funny one um god what what else here and yes i am actually looking through a list did you um, mention the, did you mention the wizard of oz no, I didn't. Well, Wizard of Oz is definitely a good one. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. it's like it's like the whole point of hey, fuck nuts, you had the, the power to do it all along. You didn't need to seek out any authority figures. That was all just a paradigm mind fuck. Uh -huh. Then of course, <clears throat> Avatar is a is a good paradigm shifting one. Um, they made it a, enough like like the like pocahontas to not ruffle the feathers of the elites but really you can see this is totally about the military industrial complex just you know going where they want and just annihilating populations and jacking resources so that one's kind of obvious there with uh with that ink is another good movie spelled i-n-k avatar was made in 2009 and so is ink and ink oh god how do i describe ink it's it's really really difficult to describe but it's it's really cool when it comes to uh to paradigms um surrogates 2009 that's another really really good movie because it's about the idea of surrendering surrendering your, your power by living vicariously through technology I mean, technology is all well and great as a as a tool, but when you become the tool, of the tools, it's just not cool. Two thousand nine, the invention of lying, with um, um, Jim Carrey. I think it was with Jim Carrey. I'm fairly, or maybe it was with somebody else. Was it with Jim Carrey? Or am I, or am I thinking of liar, liar? I might be confusing that one with liar, liar. But yeah, the invention of lying is about a fictional world that looks a lot like this one. But the only difference is, is there's no such thing as a lie. Everybody tells the truth about everything. And then this guy discovers lying. And, and it's just like, you know, like there's this one scene where it's like, he walks up to this beautiful woman and he's like look there's an emergency she's like what and and he's like if you don't have sex with me right now the world is going to end and she's like oh my god well we better get to it then <laughs> you know <laughs> it was just really funny um and it also kind of you know uh, mimics the idea of like what society tells you is true is is true and never question it and and you know that the idea that your 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 leaders could be lying to you or anybody could be lying to you oh that's blasphemy you know oh you should you should also mention wally too uh w a l l e yeah that that was that was another good one um god i've seen it i forgot all the all the um, i still remember all, all, all the good. specifics but it, it's definitely like a view of humanity through the eyes of, of robots, very innocent, childlike robots that serve humanity. And the robots aren't like, you know, really mistreated or anything, but humanity has gotten like so, like literally fat and lazy that like they're all on like these freaking like hover couches and shit. And zipping around everywhere and they they live their entire lives just like you know eight zillion freaking pounds in these hover couches and just like zipping around everywhere and they're so 
muscularly weak and so ominously fat that they can't even walk. Like if one of those hover chairs accidentally tips over, then like the robots need to come and like put the human back on this hover chair thing. Otherwise the human won't be able to to go to the shower units or to eat or drink or anything. If that human was just left there, they would die. They become just so completely helpless. So yeah, that was like an interestingly fucked up movie. <laughs> Well, it just kind of states the obvious of if we become too complacent and too reliant, that's kind of what you turn into. That's kind of what the globalists want you to turn into. Yeah, they they just want you to be, you know, jacked into a machine and performing your function as a part of the machine. But with this scenario, there were no thin and healthy and, and fit globalist elites running everything. This is just what the entirety of humanity had just kind of sunk to, regardless. So it's like mm -hmm. everybody was was well treated and basically happy, like blissfully. But it was a very like bottom level happy. Like a very, very basic diluted version of happy. And they didn't know anything else. They they didn't know that there were greater levels of happiness. They didn't know about things like accomplishment. You know, they didn't even know about taking a fucking walk down the street. <laughs> you know, they they were just so fucking screwed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Twenty ten Alice in Wonderland is another good one because it focuses a lot on just like, you know, societal shoulds and shouldn'ts and taboos. One of my favorite quotes from there, I even made a deviation on DeviantArt about this, uh, goes to the effect of, you know, if it was proper for everybody to wear a codfish on the top of their head, would you do it? <laughs> uh -huh. Because she kept getting told, you know, she's asking, why do I need to do this? Why do I need to do that? Oh, well, it's proper. It's proper. It's proper. It's proper. It's expected of you. It's proper. It's like, well, if wearing a codfish on your head was proper, would you do it? Uh -huh. Oh, let's see. What's another good one? Um, Inception is, is another good one. Um, made in 2010. And that really goes into paradigms and about, you know, illusions and reality and, and stuff like that. And about how, how easy it, it can be to confuse the difference between what's imagined and what's real. So that's like a pretty cool eye opener. Let's see. Um... What else here? Um, 2012, Rise of the Guardians. Um, let me see, wait, which one? Or am I confusing that with... Um, I, I just want to make sure that the name of the movie and the movie I'm actually thinking of is one and the same. Oh, okay. I remember this one. It basically, it's about all the, you know, all the various characters, you know, Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, you know, all, all, all the different, you know, various quote-unquote made-up characters, but that are based, most of them are, are based in, you know, ancient um, esoteric stuff. So, it's it's really an extremely esoteric movie. So, like, if you're expecting Santa Claus and, and the Tooth Fairy and the Easter Bunny and all that to be, like, you know, 
your your typical like what you're used to you know think again this is like you know like 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 you know moody asshole santa claus and little badass ass kicking you know fucking bunny rabbit and you know this is like a a, a freaking shit serious um movie and the whole thing surrounds the idea of our belief systems construct our reality around us and you know exactly what paradigms have to do with how society turns out so you know this isn't like you know rudolph saves christmas and it's all cute and whatever this is like a really like serious as shit movie um let's see 2013 Elysium, that's a really good one. Obviously, that's a typical, um, you know, future scenario, globalist elites type of thing. Um, the majority of the people get to live on a, on a trashed planet with really inferior health care and all that. It's a total tyranny, whereas the um, minority elites get to live in Elysium, which is a space station that, that orbits Earth. And it's got, you know, this, you know... Oh, this, I just remembered a really another good, 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 good film. Uh, Gattaca. It was on Netflix. Have you ever heard of Gattaca? Sounds vaguely familiar. I don't know if I've ever seen it. Well, anyway, it's about... Um, Gattaca is essentially this place. It's it's a really good film. It's a really good film. There's basically It's basically where um, designer babies become the new the new way of doing things, you know, genetic selection, all of that stuff, eugenicist on, eugenicism on steroids, you know, there's no longer natural conception, it's all artificial, you know, you go to an office, they take a sperm sample from the male, and they take an egg sample from the female, and they genetically, you know, it's not them controlling the traits, they're just making sure that your child has the best traits, like they're smart, they're super fast, kind of like if you know Star Trek references, basically they're making Dr. Julian Bashirs. They're making super smart. They're they're basically doing it for the benefit of society, not as a tyrannical thing. But anyway, <clears throat> there's this kid, you know, he grows up to be a man, but anyway, you know, he's got a brother who was genetically and he was a genetic baby. He was naturally conceived, which is kind of a freak of nature thing in uh, this society. And he's basically got to struggle with the likelihood that he's 95% likely to die from heart cancer. And, you know, they basically calculate all of these inevitable risks and variables by being a natural born baby instead of being, you know, genetically modified. And they treat it as some sort of taboo if you, if you don't take, if you do things the natural way instead of actually doing it the societally approved way. <clears throat> But anyway, all of the genetically modified people get to go to Gattaca, they get the best jobs, they get the best schooling, they get the best of everything that the world has to offer. And people who are naturally conceived are basically slaves to, are a slave underclass that basically get the worst jobs, they get all of the intermedial stuff like janitor and things of that nature. So it's a really, it's a really good whistleblowing movie and basically what happens is the <clears throat> the uh, natural born guy basically builds himself up he basically uh, does an illegal thing um, there the, he, he saw this I can't remember specifically I haven't watched it in a while but um, he comes across this one guy who you know is willing to sell his genetics and by sell he means basically skin samples uh, urine samples this society they they constantly analyze your genetics through urine samples and things of that nature to make sure that you're you and not some imposter or whatever that's how they take security on that very seriously so blood samples everything so basically this guy makes a lifetime supply of blood samples, urine samples. He basically sells himself to this guy and he basically goes under the fake alias of this guy who was a world famous soccer player who 
um, secretly had a really bad accident and basically he was constricted to a wheelchair and so he basically sells himself to this guy so he can continue on in his legacy and he basically rides off the back of this guy in a good way and you know gets into Gattaca and becomes a an astronaut and all that stuff and <clears throat> Some of his co-workers eventually find out he isn't who he says he is, but they support the fact that he's doing what he's doing. He's basically standing up for himself and basically saying that just because I may not be genetically perfect doesn't mean I'm incapable of doing something. You know, so that's kind of that's kind of the idea behind that film. It's a good film. Yeah, that definitely sounds interesting. Um, oh, it is. With Elysium, like I was saying, like, totally high technology, like, basically, people age very slowly, and they don't die of disease or anything like that, because they've got these medical machines that, you know they scan you for any damage and then it just automatically repairs it like you know no surgery or anything it's some sort of like quantum thing that's going on you know it's like a little box thing that almost looks like a technological coffin or something or like the sarcophagus on stargate sg1 or whatever and you know you lay down in it and you know the machine identifies you based on your genetics because you know everybody's got you know everybody's logged into the system and um if you are a you know confirmed as a citizen of elysium and all that so on and so forth um then it'll scan you and repair everything obviously if you're not a citizen of elysium and you happen to, to you know get a hold of this sort of technology and you try to use it everything's all just kind of on a massive network so you know the the little healing bed's gonna like bounce you out and just be like sorry you're not a citizen of elysium so fuck you um so yeah it's very very interesting and you know this this one guy is um you know he's basically because of the way the system is um i'm not going to you know give any spoilers but let's just say through a series of events because of the way the system is he ends up with like you know only a few days to live or something like that and you know he wanted to make his last few days on earth count for something i mean he was hoping to maybe get to use one of those bio bed thingies but he knew that the probabilities of that were going to be slim because um you know just him and these other people were just pretty much leading an assault on elysium and their primary goal was to reprogram the computer so that every citizen on the planet is registered as being a citizen of Elysium. So that automatically, you know, all the medical robots, because, you know, everything is governed by robots and artificial intelligence and stuff that, that you know, quote unquote, took care of the people on Earth and so on. So, so that these medical robots would just click in and see the statistics that there's all these people on earth that are in need of medical assistance and fly down there with the bio beds and stuff and and, and do their thing but in order to, to you know cue everybody in on the network as being a citizen of elysium you know it kind of required kind of a a guns blazing you know sort of um an assault like an insurgency to where you know this guy's like outnumbered like you know freaking like a thousand to one and so he knew that his chances of making it you know to one of these uh bio beds to heal himself was you know pretty fucking slim but at the very least you know he wanted to go out doing something that makes a difference so it's just a really like action action packed dramatic you know sort of movie 
that is very reminiscent of the sort of thing that the globalists want to do to us and have partially done to us already. If you're not registered as a citizen of Elysium, you're not registered as a globalist elite, then you are denied the best health care, denied the best resources, denied, you know, all, all the things that are just regular, you know, humans have a right to have, but you're denied it. And, you know, you got to deal with food stamps and Obamacare and a shitty economy and war and genocide and all this other stuff, you know. So we're like halfway there already. Um, and then, of course, uh, 2013, Ender's Game. That was a really interesting one. How do I describe this? Um, I don't think I could really describe it at all without blowing too much of it, but I'll just say that there there, there was an alien attack that was fought against and, and won like something like 70 years prior, and now there was... Um, you know, since then, they uh, they developed better technology and humans could, you know, travel through space and all that now. And they found the the home planet of these, um, you know, this race that had invaded 70 years ago. And, and they were worried that, you know, it seemed like they were amassing for, you know, another attack. And, um, you know, trying to figure out what to do about it and whatever. And a lot of the stuff that um, that went down in that was really all about, you know, like that's, again, that fine line between good and bad and, you know, all this, you know, the brainwashing and authoritarian stuff because um, it became a very fear-based, you know, authoritarian society. But, like, under the guise of, like, oh, we're patriotic, and everything's all good, and we're all happy, and we love everything, and everything's fine, and, you know, all that. 2013, epic, animated. Um, basically, again, that, that similarly, you know, deals with, um, well, mainly paradigms in regards to perceptions and prejudices and you know just kind of kind of blowing a lot of that out of the water um frozen we already went over oblivion 2013 great fucking movie i can't even say too much about it without you know totally blowing it like that movie is mindfuck after mindfuck after mindfuck after mine fuck but i will say that it's just it's it's a you know it's it takes place in a you know in kind of a post-apocalyptic world there was like an alien invasion sort of thing and you know it's the aftermath of that and so on and so forth and trying to take what's left of the human race and make the best of things and so on and so forth but not everything was as it seemed, not by a long shot. And it just gets into mindfuck after mindfuck after mindfuck after mindfuck, and there's all these paradigms and just like, yeah. I can't really say too much more without giving some serious spoilers that wouldn't be fair to give. Um, 2013, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. That's kind of a funny movie. Um it's not really action-packed or all that dramatic or whatever, but it's just kind of kind of cover the topic of, you know, we have more potential and more capability than we think we do, and this Walter Mitty guy just ends up in a in a in a bit of a bind, and um, just kind of kind of hits his fuck it point, and he decides he's just gonna kind of. He's going to be all he can be, and I don't mean in the army sense, but he's just going to gonna give it his full, and he's going to gonna face his fears, and he's going to do whatever it takes to, you know, to do what he needs to do. And he has, like, this crazy adventure and this total, like, unfolding, and basically he becomes the person, the type of, of, of person and personality and the person who does these things that he's always wanted to be and do – but never thought he could, and he always envied, you know, everybody else that did and had what he wanted to do and, and what he wanted to have, and, 
you know, didn't really think he was capable, and he ended up finding out that he is extremely capable. 2014, Divergent, and then of course the sequel came out called Insurgent. That's that's all paradigms and mind fucks and totalitarian and like it 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 gets re really cool and into that stuff and is very relevant to you know the times we're living in now and it's set in Chicago. <laughs> I mean, I don't think they they really filmed there or anything, but it's set in like a futuristic, post-apocalyptic, you know, Chicago, like. It, so, uh, so uh, something so terribly bad happened that Lake Michigan is gone. Like, they don't even get into what the fuck happened that was so bad that, like, you know, the face of the earth was that dramatically <laughs> freaking changed. Um, Chicago was in ruins, but not completely destroyed. I mean, there's a lot of the buildings that were still intact enough to where, you know they could, you know, build onto that and add onto that and renovate that. And there was still, you know, a lot of extremely high technology, um, the sort of technology to where, you know, you could go through computer simulations by just, you know, taking these different electrodes and shit and hooking them on your head and whatever else. And, you know, these chemicals they inject in, into you to get your biology into a more receptive uh, you know, state and just, you know, like, like holodeck in your head sort of thing. And, you know, more than one person can even go into that at a time and stuff and really super like high tech sort of dystopian society. Um, then of course, 2014 Lucy, um, was, was a really good one. And, you know, kind of about the, human, you know, potential and, and the brain and all that. This chick starts developing all these crazy abilities and stuff. And the last movie I could think to mention is The Giver. Have you ever seen The Giver? I've heard that it sounds familiar. 2014 The Giver. Really, really good one. Um, very reminiscent of today's society in a lot of ways. Not completely, but... It's one of those things, you know, it's it's post-apocalyptic. They don't say how far into the future, but it's post-apocalyptic. And there's this um this plateau where there's this this really highly technologically advanced city. And everything at least at first glance appears as as if it's perfect, but it's quite the opposite because they've dumbed everybody down not only with their the educational system but also with pharmaceutical drugs so oh, doesn't that sound familiar and the pharmaceutical drugs are used to repress the vast bulk of the human emotional spectrum to the point that the word love is deemed as an archaic and an antiquated expression they don't say, I love you. That They can say that they're proud of, you know, what somebody has done and, and they feel, you know, really good about what happened or they feel accomplished or they feel satisfied or happy or, or that, you know, that they, you know, they can't say they love another person. They don't feel that. It's just like, you know, they can say that I feel that your your presence in my life has been has been mutually beneficial and and rewarding and I definitely want you to continue to be in my life because you know that's you know it's really working out well and I'm really enjoying you know what has come of that and I look forward to more and so on and so forth but really really like you know materialistic shopping mall very surface level emotions that our society encourages us to be repressed, you know, into. And funny thing is, just like our society, they don't even know that they're being put in that position. They don't, most of the people don't know the effects of the drugs. They don't know anything of what society ever was or could be. Knowledge of, of past history is forbidden. Gee, doesn't that one sound familiar too? Um, it's just this total illusory reality 
and um, I'm not going to get into the specifics because I don't want to, you know, give anybody spoilers. But basically, you know, uh, there's there's people who occasionally start to come on to the truth of things and you know try to break out of it and intend to set everybody free and um you know it really tends to not work out it happens very rarely but you know the system quells that that dissension and um you know it's so sick that people don't even know what death is um all the babies are genetically created of course you know did the whole genetic modification thing um, and birth babies are not with birth parents or anything like that. It's all like machine assembly line sort of stuff. You know, if, if a man and a woman get along well together in a cohabitation and, you know, they decide they want to be mentors to the next generation, then, you know, they can submit a form or whatever to be considered as candidates to be given a child and so on and so on and so on and it's so numbed down that like they like they have no no clue what death is um when people hit a certain age they euthanize them but they don't call it that that i forgot what they call it i think they call it um leaving to beyond or you know something similarly phrased and they don't understand that that means dying Oh, that reminds me of another good one, Soylent Green. I've Soylent still Green actually is, never seen it. That's still on my to-do list. Yeah, I haven't watched it either, but I've heard of you it. You know, I've seen cut, I've I've seen cut scenes and stuff, but you know, it's essentially where they take old people and they turn them into uh, a popular snack called Soylent Green. And one man figures out what the secret of Soylent Green is, and they try to kill him to prevent from spreading the secret, because they euthanize old people once they're too old and incapable of working. Yeah, really nasty stuff. Okay, any, any others that... Uh you could think of because I think for, for the moment I'm kind of I'm kind of at the end of my list <laughs> yeah I think yeah I think I've probably gone through everything that I can really think of at the moment well this has definitely been a good discussion and hopefully um, you know whoever watches you know this video in the future hopefully it um, it inspires you to think critically and use your imagination and to research into things in a non-biased way. Um, a lot, a lot of researchers, they only research into what already fits into their current paradigm and they dismiss anything outside of that. That's not research. That's bad science. <laughs> um, terrible science. So yeah, I mean, you know, believe nothing, disbelieve nothing, question everything you know we're just sharing perspectives and doing our best to make you think of it and you know come to whatever conclusions about things that you want to agree with us disagree with us have some other completely third party other opinion whatever um but yeah just um just be very very curious and explore and question and just you know expand your mind and and know that whatever you think life is there's a hell of a lot more that, that you're not seeing but that you can see but only well as the bible says seeking you shall find knock and the door shall be open kind of the biblical way of saying you know get off your ass use your fucking brain uh <laughs> so yeah it's in your head for a reason may as well use it for something other than Angry Birds and Animal Farm or Farmville or whatever the fuck that game is called. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, that about covers it. So everybody have a good, you know, day, night, morning, whatever it is uh, where you are while you're watching this. And uh, 
catch y'all later. Oh. Anything else you want to say? Well, oh, just have a good night and always just keep searching for answers and disbelieve nothing, believe nothing, discern everything. Just have That's a good night. Lots of, lots of fucking questions. Uh -huh. Anyway, to everybody out there, have a good night. <laughs>